So this is the last part of unit 1011, kinetics. We're going to start looking at collision theory and potential energy diagrams. So collision, uh, chemical kinetics. <clears throat> it studies the speed or rate at which reactions occur. The speed of an event is defined as the change that occurs in a given interval of time, commonly referred to as the reaction rate. So the reaction rate measures how quickly product, the product, in this case B, is formed or how quickly reactant A is consumed. So collision theory, which we saw through the Pogel, molecules must collide effectively. To get the home run, you got to hit the ball straight on. The greater number of collisions occur per second, the greater the rate that it occurs. Molecules must pro pro <clears throat> process a certain minimum amount of kinetic energy in order to react. A molecule moves faster um, as it moves faster, they collide more forcefully. So the faster you swing the bat, the harder you hit the ball, which increases the rate. The minimum energy required to initiate a chemical reaction, this is called the activation energy. To increase any rate, at least one of two things must happen or increase. You have to increase the number of times it collides or the collisions or how effective those collisions are. So one of the things you want to uh, see is how they're orientated. In a typical gas reaction, typical temperatures and pressure, a molecule undergoes 10 to the 10th collisions per second. That's a lot, like over a million. But only one in every 10 to a 13th collision results in a reaction. Not every collision in which reactants have um, energy or energy of activation or greater result in reaction. So just as we were looking at the different collisions, not every time they hit do they make a direct head-on home run. Sometimes you get the fouls and it just like hits a little portion of the bat. It has to be straight on. They have to be orientated. The molecules have to hit straight on or it's not going to work. It's not going to collide in the correct way. So the rate of chemical reactions are affected by a couple different things. For instance, the pressure on the system, gases only, the temperature at which the reaction occurs, the nature of the reactants, like the surface area, organic versus inorganic, what state is it in, solid, liquid, or gas, or even solution, is there a catalyst? So just like a road, we're going to figure out, is the number going to be affected or the effectiveness? So co concentration, does it increase the number or the effectiveness? It increases the number of collisions, yeah. So you throw more in it, you get more collisions. You throw more in it, you get more collisions, you get more head-on collisions, which increases the rate. How about pressure? Again, if I increase that pressure, I'm making the 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 walls smaller, so they're going to hit more and more together. So you're going to have more collisions and more correct, effective co collisions, which increases the rate. Okay, temperature. If I increase that temperature, I'm increasing. They're not going as slow. They start to increase, and they hit all over the place. So I in, increase the number and effectiveness of collisions, and I double the rate. So these, not so much the effectiveness, but it definitely increases the rate. I double the rate by increasing the temperature. How about surface area? Number of collisions, it increases the rate. So the only thing that really is affecting effectiveness is temperature. How about dissolving? That one increases the collisions because you're breaking them into separate parts. How about a collision? So collisions 
or a catalyst? We don't know. Does it really affect the rate? Mm, just how fast the rate happens. So for uh, potential energy diagrams, for exothermic reactions, A plus B goes to C in heat. The reactants combine to form a product and the release of energy. Laws of conservation state that energy can't be converted, but it can be conserved in any chemical reaction. Or it can be converted. So in this way, it's conserved in the chemical reaction. If heat is released when the products are formed, then the potential energy of C must be less than A and B together. Potential energy changes that accompany a chemical reaction can be re represented by a potential energy diagram. This. So there's the potential energy. Here's the reaction coordinates. So what we just said, an exothermic, A and B has to be more than C if C produces heat, if it produces C and heat, right? So the reaction mechanism right here, this is the pathway through the reaction. It has to go up to start doing this, and then it flattens out to produce C. All right. It describes the order in which the bonds are broken or formed in the rearrangement of atoms. So A and B are formed to produce C. All right, any interval that begins at the x-axis is a potential energy of the interval. So this is the x-axis right down here. These are potential energies all the way up, right? So this is the potential energy of AB. This is potential energy, we'll get to that in a second, potential energy of the product. So reactants, products. This middle is called the activated complex, activation energy. All right, products are at the lower end of the level, means the products are more stable. So this isn't so stable, much more stable. All energy required to um required to activate a reaction is of course the activation energy all reactions have activant activation energy that bump we got to get it up and over to get it into the hole okay so the activated complex all the way up to that bump so activation energy right of the forward is just from here to the bump of the reverse is from here to the bump. Since the reaction have both forward and reverse direction, every reaction has two activation. You have the forward and the reverse. The activation energy is the energy difference from the starting point to the top of the energy barrier or the, sorry, for the forward. One activation energy will always be greater. So looking at this, this is little, this is greater. One is always going to have a greater amount because if I reverse it, if I go back that way, the forward, if I go back this way, the forward is going to have more than the reverse. Okay. So reaction rates with lower activation energies will have a larger fraction of molecules with the minimum energy required. The lower the activation energy, the faster the reaction. So this, um, here's the lower, here's the higher. By raising the temperature of a reaction, so instead of having here, I raise the temperature, I lower the activation energy, so more molecules will make it over that hump at a faster rate. And the higher the temperature, faster the reaction. Okay. So what does this have to do with anything? So we are going to look at the um, delta H's or delta H. What is that? That's the heat of the reaction of the whole thing. So what you do is you take the heat of reaction of the product right here minus the heat of the, re or sorry, the product right here minus the heat of reactants. It gives you the delta H. This this middle part right here. Not the activation energy, 
the whole length just in between from this line to this line. Okay? Heat of reaction. So if the reaction is exothermic in one direction, it is endothermic in the opposite. So going this way, it's exothermic. Going back, it'll be endothermic. The heat release will also be equal to the heat absorbed. So right here, the heat of reaction. For endothermic reaction, the product is up here, meaning it's less stable than the activation energy or the forward energy. What is the PE of the reactants? What's the PE of the products? Activation energy of the forward, activation energy of the reverse, delta H. All right, PE of the reactants. So here's my reactants. It is 30 kilojoules. Here's my products. It is 10 kilojoules. What is my activation energy of the um, forward up here? 40 minus 30, there's 10. What is my activation energy of the reverse? 40 minus 10 is 30. All right, what's my delta H? I want just this middle part. That is 10 minus 30. Because so remember, you're doing re, uh, products minus reactants. 10 minus 30 is a negative 20 kilojoules. All right, let's see here. If the P of the reactants is 25, so P of my reactants right here is 25. My activation of the forward all the way up is 55. My delta H is 33. What is my PE of the products? So potential energy of my products is right from here to here. Well, if this is 25, my PE, what's up here? This is 25. This is 33. 25 minus 33 is uh, 12. I believe that might be add 12 more. That should go up to 30. Yeah. There's 25. There's 55. There's 33. So 25 and 33 is 58. Sorry, that's my bad. I can't calculate. <laughs> without looking at it, my activation energy from here all the way up, it's going to be 50, or sorry, 22. Activation energy of the reverse, sorry, that's the reverse. Right here, it's 22. 55 minus <clears throat> 33 is 22 kilojoules. My activated complex, this whole thing, is 80. It's 25 and 55 is 80. All right. Which is represented here? Got X down here, Y and Z up here. So let's see. Do we have Y and Z first? Mm -mm. So C and D are out. Do we have Y uh, X equals Y plus Z in heat? E, not really. Heat is down here because it's absorbed to get up to here. So X plus heat gives you Y and Z. All right, last but not least, we're going to look into catalyst real quick. Catalyst is a substance that changes the speed of the chemical reaction without undergoing permanent chemical change in itself. That means you can pull the catalyst out after you're done using it. Catalysts are very common in the body, in the atmosphere, in the oceans, in the industrial, in industrial chemistry. So in our bodies, we have enzymes. Most um, many or most of the most interesting and important examples of catalysts involve reactions with living systems. Us. A large number of efficient biological catalysts, known as enzymes, are necessary for many of these reactions to occur at suitable rates. Most enzymes are large protein molecules with molecular rates ranging from about 10,000 AMU to about 1 million AMU. So what the heck does a catalyst do? So a catalyst changes the reaction mechanism and in the process lowers the energy barrier of the reaction. So you remember how we I showed you earlier, temperature lowered it. It's kind of like the same thing. Say I lowered and I got temperature, I increased the temperature and I lowered it to here. 
I want to lower it even more to make my reaction go faster. So I'm going to throw in a catalyst. The catalyst is going to go from here down to here. So it's going to uh, go faster. Since delta H is calculated using only the final initial states of delta H remains unaffected. So I'm just going from here to here, not delta E, delta H. Okay, so original mechanism changes in a catalyst reaction, catalyzed. Each individual reaction has a lower activation rate. So I have this. Here's the normal uncatalyzed. Once I do the catalyst, I add a little bit. It lowers right there, it lowers right there, it goes faster. So um, one thing is a Cadillac converter, something you may have heard about in um, automobiles. So what do automobiles give off? Carbon monoxide, not so good. Uh, hydrocarbons, volatile organi uh, organic compounds, VOCs, produced by unburned fuel, nitrogen oxides, NO, NO2, together called NOx or NOx, um, contributes to smog, acid rain, causes irritation to human mucous memories. So we want to lower that. We want to, we don't want that as much. There are three main regulated emissions. Also ones that catalytic converters are designed to reduce. So we don't want these. What does it do? So first off, we have reduction catalyst, oxidation catalyst, and a honeycomb. So first, the reduction catalyst is the first stage it lowers the, the NOx emissions. It rips the nitrogens out of the molecule and holds onto it, freeing the oxygens to form oxygen, which you want. The nitrogens then bond with other nitrogens that are also stuck to the catalyst forming N2. So you get a lot of nitrogen buildup, okay? And then the next thing, we have the oxidation catalyst, which reduces the unburned hydrocarbons, the VOCs, the carbon monoxides by burning and oxidizing them with the remaining oxygen from here um, over a platinum palladium catalyst. Okay, so it uses the oxygen from here to reduce the carbon monoxide. All right, so work on the diagrams. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Hope you guys have a great day.